This is a pata, uh, this is a SATA drive, serial ATA. Those are the connectors there for it. And that's a conventional method of connection for nowadays hard drives and storage capacity stuff. Now this one, you may argue, it looks the same. Same connector, well it looks the same on the surface, connects in the same way, but there's a slight difference. This is called a serial attached SCSI. Straight off the bat, one thing I do notice, or you can tell, is there's a lot more chips on the bottom drive, which is the ser uh, serial attached SCSI, than there is on the uh, serial ATA at the top. So it looks like it requires more processing, or a bit more grunt, so presumably maybe faster. Now, uh, I could tell you for a fact that standard serial ATA hard drives, SATA hard drives like today, the RPM of the drives are 7,200 RPM, or maybe a little bit slower if you have a, 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 a green version, which means it will run at a lower speed, which will extend the lifetime. Thank you, Bird. Extend the lifetime of the hard, hard drive, presumably. Now, this one is uh, made by Dell. And this one actually spins at a whopping 15,000 RPM. So you may think, well, oh, maybe it is faster due to the rotational speed of the, uh, the spindle and the, you know, the layers that are inside these hard drives. So I can tell you one thing, these are a little bit older technology and these are a little bit newer. So you could argue that the newer ones may be better due to technology, but due to the faster RPM speeds, you will get better read access time and write access time. Uh, these are generally used in servers, obviously for that method. So if you're running a SQL server or if you're running anything that's data hungry or data heavy, then you would require these 15,000 RPM hard drives because overall they are that much faster for that purpose. Whereas a normal SATA drive, it would cope with um, higher data throughput and stuff, but it's not as fast. So what I'm gonna do in this video today is have a look inside a serial attached SCSI, a SAS drive, commonly known as, and we're gonna look at a uh, serial ATA. They both run on a serial bus, serial attached SCSI, serial ATA. So uh, let's jump in and have a look and see if there are any notable differences, apart from the circuit board we've just looked at. Obviously there's a lot more chips on this one. Um, just to see if there's any internals that are different. I mean, I'm sure you may have seen inside a hard drive before, typical hard drive. I just wanted to see if there was any noticeable difference in the faster RPM one. So uh, let's jump in and have a look and see what the differences may be. There may not be none. They may be very slight. I don't know, that's why I wanted to do this video, to show you guys if there are any differences and save you guys ruining your hard drives. I have loads. So it doesn't matter if I destroy even one of these two drives. So uh, these tend to be a bit more expensive, obviously for, aimed for the server market and data processing centers and all that sort of jazz, where these are sort of entry level, kind of consumer based hard drives. So cost is a little bit less for those. Um, Capacity wise, these seem to be quite more per gigabyte in the expense section, where these tend to be a little bit less. Not sure why that is, but having an extra speed, you can use it for more sort of data throughput stuff. So um, let's have a look and jump in and see what we can see if there's any differences. Right, okay. Just tried this with a, I think it's a T8 size Torx screwdriver. Um, I've just started to open them and I, I lost the footage. Well, I didn't lose the footage, I had the footage, but I forgot to press record on the uh, mobile phone down here, so you wouldn't have heard jack shite that I was saying. So I did start off doing this well, but in, uh, in the land of YouTube, things happen. Oh well. Um, Some people have asked me, am I endorsed by Canon to show any of their products? Uh, the simple answer is uh, no. 
you may see Canon M100, obviously. You can't see them up there. Canon lenses up there, which I'm not going to show you. Lenses to the side of me. So, anyway, I digress. Right, one, two, three, four, five, six screws for the top panel. This is the SAS drive, serial uh, attached SCSI. I keep going to say SATA. I don't think there's one more. If I remember, it's been a while since I've taken apart a hard drive. I think there is a screw hiding under the label somewhere. I think it might be here. Find out in a moment. Let's see if I can get. Did we get it? Hmm. Maybe. Let's cut around this thing. Yeah, you find they hide screws under labels. I'm not quite sure why they do that. Let me get some grunt behind this because I say these screws were quite difficult. Especially as I haven't got the right Torx screwdriver. So maybe I have to peel the label off. <coughs> okay. Which is going to be quite hard. Well, at least you've seen it in real action. Get my hand out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. Oh my god. Should have done this off camera, really, shouldn't I? I managed to loosen the other screws and completely forgot that there's hidden screws. Is there one there? Yeah, I don't even see that. Ah, there we go. I'm going to take my arm off in a minute. I'm not sure if I've got that screw or not. It's probably a different size of which I haven't got. Which will be fun. Yeah, it doesn't feel like I've bit the screw. So let me see. What you can generally do with Torx screw bits is actually use a small flat edge screwdriver. I don't know if that's turning or whether I'm just mashing that screw. Let me see. I can say sometimes. Oh, I did bite the screw. Look at that. Does help to have other tools handy. Hopefully that's the only one. And we can get to the inside. Sometimes these are sealed. Let me get down so I can show you what I'm doing. Flat edge into the side. These are obviously vacuum sealed when they're made, just so it uh, protects the, the disc on the underside. But this is the first time I'm actually undoing a, let me see if I can get a bigger, a meatier flat edge. That one doesn't seem to be cutting it. Get it? Cutting it. Ah, I laugh at your own jokes. Right, okay. I'm trying to lose my mobile. I'm still on the mic, so you will be able to hear me still, hopefully. What we're we doing for time? Four minutes, okay. There's ten minutes minimum in 60 frames a second on this uh, M100. So I'll keep close eye on Zidane. Well, this one seems to be well sealed. I don't really want to damage the, the spindle or anything on the underside. Maybe there is another screw hidden under Daz label. Maybe an easier I'll come off camera and done this really. That seems to be the only point where it's uh, tight. There you can hear the magnets. There must be another screw. We might get lucky. Might be able to just prise. Let's get a peek. I can't see any other screws tying that together. It seems to be tight in this bottom corner. 
obviously you get the di neodymium magnets out of these. So if you do come across a hard drive and it's ruined, or you want a neodymium magnet, neodymium magnet, always a good idea to, uh, I wonder if that's a screw. Ladies and gentlemen, there is another screw. Why'd I like to hide these? I would have no idea. As I say, where well, I haven't got the right T size screwdriver, this is going to be fun. Let's see if Murphy's with us today, as Dave at the EV blog would say. Others call it Sod's Law, Dave calls it Murphy's Law. I'm not sure really what I would call it. Bad luck. Don't tell me there's another bloody screw. Talk about over engineering this stuff, eh? At least it's screwed down tight and gonna pop off in operation, I suppose. Now this should be the last one. These have more come out easier because I've been prizing around the side. So if I've done that in the first place, I would have saved a bit of higgledy piggledy. I can feel the neodymium magnets now. Let me just take these out by hand. I'm coming to seven minutes on the old video, so uh, I shall keep an eye on that. There's probably another one in there, isn't there? It's that little fuck there. Is there one in there? No, there's not. There's probably another one hidden, guessing we've had all those hidden. Gibulous. Screws, where are the screws? I want some custard. Yeah. No comebacks. We're reaching eight minutes on the video, so I'll prize it open some more. Save you antagonizing looking at what I'm freaking doing and getting a bit cheesed off. So we'll come back and we'll continue this uh, deep excavation. Okay, the moment we've all been waiting for, the big reveal! Whoa, what's going to be inside? There was another bastard screw. So let's count all of them in total. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, Ten freaking screws holding this piece of metal on. Well, they're serious about any air gaps, aren't they? Because it's actually got a seal around there as well, which will prevent any moisture from getting inside. And I'll show you something as well. So here we go. Mystery reveal. Oh, I scratched it. Now look at that big blob there. See that? That's like um, silica gel or something to do with vibration. I can't remember which one it is. But, as you can tell, it's quite a big blob. So that's either noise dampening, which it probably is, since it runs at 15,000 RPM, or it's uh, some sort of solution, like a silica gel that will um, zap any moisture or something similar to that. Let me turn my other light on. Change the color. Yeah, that'll do. Wrong button. That'll do. Got a bit of extra light here, so I know that looks pretty sexy. Check that out. That is awesome. That is awesome. One thing I do notice, given the size of the drive, obviously this being a five and a quarter inch, which is a standard sort of desktop size, if you like. It's got a, it's got small heads. It's got small um, disc platter. Now that's interesting. Obviously there'll be a few of those, probably about four or five in the stack. Um, let me get round to this way. So you see, that there is the actuator on, so that will be buzzing backwards and forwards. That's the clicking you can hear a lot of the time. That'll be that, it's hissing and farting backwards and forwards and all that business. See, I scratched it, look at that. Now the reason why these are sealed around the outside is if I show you, look at that. See that? 
do that, your data is gone forever. So that's why they like to keep it nice and sealed. Neodymium magnets are actually under here, which I'm not going to do right now because they are actually quite strong and to get them out can be quite dangerous. I'll probably end up breaking my camera. Um, another thing as well to point out, let me show you this as well. I think this is another attempt at driving out moisture. Sorry, it's a bit too light. I'm trying to get, no, I can't see it. Yeah, just like a like a fabric material. So again, might be something to do with moisture, relieving moisture or something. But uh, yeah, I was surprised at that size of that disc there, that platter. Uh, sorry, whatever you call it, I don't know. I'm not a hard drive specialist. I just use them. Um, but yeah, that is uh, a lot smaller than what I would have first imagined. Because in the five and a quarter inch, well. <laughs> This is a five and a quarter inch, but when you took when you look at a standard hard drive, i.e. this one, the platters in here are huge. They're about the size, about half the size of the drive itself. So given that this one's got smaller plates, shall we call them? Lack for a better term. That's um, that that's actually pretty cool. That's actually like a laptop hard drive. Laptop hard drive size in a five quarter inch chassis. Hmm, I quite like that. I won't go any further, there's really not much else to look at. Literally, there's a couple of ribbon cables up here, obviously, which connects to the back side, as we've seen already, to the board. Also, they're the power pins for the motor itself. Um, so, I'm not going to go any deeper. This video has been quite long already. But let me know if you liked this kind of in-depth look at something. Um, I quite enjoyed taking it apart. If I'd have known where all the screws were, I probably would have done less damage and you would have got a nice shiny effect on the platter itself. But I, I just love how shiny those are. That's like uber polished. Like absolutely major. Oh, there's my face. Hello. They are major polished. Look at that, look ruined. That just it just just my OCD's kicking in already, and I'm like, no, don't do it, oh, too late. But if you're gonna ruin your data, that's one way to do it. But again, as I say, there are like five plates underneath here. So there's five times that plate. And I definitely haven't got a torque screwdriver that will fit that screw. So unfortunately, I can't go any further, I'm afraid. But I hope you like this video. This has been a look at a five and a quarter with a three and a quarter inch disc platter or disc surface in them. Um, I quite liked it, it's pretty cool. As I say, I wouldn't do this yourself. If this is a SAS drive, they can be expensive. And uh, you don't really want to be doing this to any enterprise grade server hard drives. Um, they do cost quite a lot, as I spoke about before. But um, <clears throat> I quite like that, that was quite interesting to look at. Was not expecting that at all, that size of uh, platter, disc, pff, whatever you want to call it. That's a platter. I keep calling it a platter, but it's not. These are the platters, I think. I don't know. Let me know if I'm uh, getting any terminology wrong, but let me know in the comments below if you know what these things are called, or to give it a quick Google if you really want to find out. So yeah, that's a look inside a SAS serial attached storage, si serial attached SCSI hard drive for enterprise servers and all that kind of jazz for high throughput and obviously data crunching, processing, SQL server stuff. So uh, let me know down in the comments what you think. This has been Dr. Run CMD, and I'll see you next time. Hope you enjoy. Please subscribe.